I'm very excited to announce RetroNAS, a free open source project created by Dan Mons. The purpose of this project is to have a centralized location on your network for things like hosting ROMs, allowing retro computers to connect to the internet, and much, much more. This video will only be able to scratch the surface of all its features, but hopefully it'll still be a good introduction. So let's jump in and take a look. Okay, I'm really fired up to be able to talk about RetroNAS, because I truly think Dan created a game changer with this project. And while at first it might be easy to hear about its features and go, oh, that's pretty neat, I'm pretty sure once how you could implement it in your setup really sinks in, that almost every retro gaming and retro computer enthusiast will either be using it or thinking about it very soon. And I know that sounds so over the top that it sounds like I must be shilling right now, but that's the best part about this. There's nothing to shill. The project is open source, software based, and 100% free. If you're already running a Linux based NAS or server, you could just install it. Or if you need to build your own from scratch, you could probably use equipment you have lying around, or even a newer Raspberry Pi. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's skip to the end and show off some of my current favorite features of RetroNAS, as well as show some of the things it'll soon be able to do as well. I want to start by showing my current personal favorite feature of RetroNAS, accessing games remotely. Let's start with the mister. First, copy your games to RetroNAS simply by accessing the network share. There's already symlinks installed for Mr. and you could copy files to the exact same folder structure as the Mr.'s microSD card. More on this in the installation video. Then, simply download the CIFS mount script I linked in this video and open it in an editor like Notepad. Then, scroll down and change the username and password to match the one on your retro NAS. Then, save the file and copy it to your Mr.'s SD card in the scripts folder. Now, power up your Mr. Make sure it's connected to your network, and run the CIFS mount script. That's it. Now you could access all the ROMs stored on your retro NAS. If you have multiple misters, this offers both the convenience of only organizing ROMs in one place, and it's a cost savings. Even if you need to buy all the parts to build a retro NAS from scratch, that's still probably cheaper than buying multiple 1TB microSD cards, and can easily fit a lot more. Oh, and if you want to go back to loading ROMs directly from your mister, simply go back into the scripts directory and run the unmount script. Here's another quick example of a feature I love. Easy loading of PS2 games with no mod required. All I did was buy a soft modded memory card with FreeMic Boot pre-installed for less than $20. Plugged it in and loaded open PS2 loader. Then I just pointed the IP address to my retro NAS, set the username and password, and loaded the list of games from the network. That's right, no fumbling with finicky software, no dealing with removing the drive every time you want to load games. Just copy your PS2 games either to the DVD or CD directory, and they'll automatically show up. All you need is a cheap network adapter for the original PS2s, and the Slims already have this network adapter built in. As a note, you can load PS1 games this way, but it uses software emulation called PopStarter. I don't prefer this method, but if that's your thing, have at it. Just load the files the same way you would if it was on an attached hard drive. So that's just two quick examples of the file hosting capabilities that's available on RetroNAS right now, but I want to take a moment to show a few things that are right around the corner. First, there's a project currently in progress that allows you to use a Raspberry Pi Zero to load ROMs onto the mode over your wireless network. And we're currently looking to integrate that functionality directly into RetroNAS, as well as possibly even build a microSD image so that configuration is as minimal as possible. Also, Sed, the creator of the Fenrir optical drive emulator for the Sega Saturn, has also been recently teasing Wi-Fi loading of ROMs. I've also spoken to the Recall Box team, who's looking into an easy way to link their software directly to RetroNAS with just the username and password needed. Okay, so in case it hasn't sunk in yet, I'm going to spell it out for you. I want you to think about how much money it would cost to get a large microSD card for every optical drive emulator that you're interested in, versus how much money you would spend on just one large hard drive in a central location. 
And I also want you to think about how much effort you put into maintaining these collections and trying to keep them synced across multiple devices, when now you could have one location that has everything taken care of all in one spot. And it doesn't really matter if you're using Raspberry Pi emulation, the Mister, or any of these ODEs with some extra stuff plugged into it, it could all work the same. And yes, I realize things like the Pi Zero 2 are skyrocketing in price because of the part shortage, but when that comes back down to the $15 it's supposed to be, one of those and the cheapest micro SD cards you could find plugged into your ODE, syncing all of your disk images off of a main server will be so much more cost effective and easy to maintain. Please check out the wiki for every console that's currently supported, as well as a ton of info on all the features retro PC users can benefit from. Dan's got a great set of videos demoing most of what's available, and I highly recommend you check those out. Honestly, what's available now is just scratching the surface of what this project could evolve into, and I would love to see people who work on other open source projects try to implement that functionality into this as well. Imagine if DreamPi functionality was integrated right in so you could use your Dreamcast modem to connect to the internet right through RetroNAS. Or what about Naomi Netbooting? The bottom line is this project is only going to grow from here and we need your help to do it as well as your help to promote it because I am far from a retro PC expert, but there are so many wonderful content creators out there that are and it's up to you to help spread the word about this, show people how to use it and get more people on board. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about in this introduction video is hardware. And I want to continue to drive the point home that if you're an IT nerd like me and you have computer parts lying around, you might not need to buy a single thing in order to get started. In fact, if you're already running a Linux server or a Linux NAS of any kind, Dan has information up on his wiki linked to the GitHub that walks you through everything that you would need in order to get started right from there. But even if you're a beginner who's never touched the command line before, you could still easily build one of these out of parts that you might even have lying around. The only things I would say are prerequisites for your final server design would be something that has a gigabit ethernet port and either a USB 3 port or a SATA port. And the only other thing I would recommend making sure you get right away is a decent hard drive. And you might already have something like an extra eight terabyte laying around, but if not, I would strongly suggest considering picking up a larger hard drive like that or bigger, and maybe grab one that's USB 3.0 based because you could always just open the case and put it inside a computer if you ever go to upgrade. But other than making sure you have a big hard drive, you could start with pretty much any piece of computer hardware that runs Linux and has gigabit ethernet ports and USB 3.0, including small compute modules or even a Raspberry Pi. But I'd like to talk a quick moment about that because I think there's a scenario that many people will be running into. There's probably a lot of people that have a Pi 3 lying around that they're not using anymore. And while it doesn't have gigabit or USB 3.0, Raspberry Pi 4s are pretty hard to find right now. But there's some good news about that. You could configure the micro SD card on your Pi 3 and you could get your USB hard drive all loaded up. And when the Pi 4s come back in stock, all you'll have to do is swap the micro SD and the USB drive over. There's no configuration. You won't even need to connect a keyboard or mouse. You just power off the old one, plug it into the new one, and that's it. Now you're back up to full speed with gigabit ethernet and USB 3.0. I ran a speed test from Mr. on both the Pi 3 and 4, and while the 3 will hold you over for now, I'd definitely suggest moving to a Pi 4 once they're back in stock. And to beat the point of death one final time, installing Debian on any old PC like this crappy old laptop might be a completely free option. Other Linux builds might not be supported today, but at least there's a free and easy choice. So that sums up my introduction to RetroNAS a project that I truly believe will make a huge impact in the retro console and retro computer scene. And I'd like to remind everybody one final time that this is a completely free and open source project. And while it seems like I'm overly enthusiastic about it, Big Retro NAS isn't sponsoring this video. I really am this fired up about it and I really do just want to share it with everybody. 
Now, by the time this intro video airs, I'll also have a video out showing the easiest ways that I have found to get started using RetroNAS that are all based off of Dan's documentation. And I highly recommend checking out the wiki, the GitHub, and all of his videos, as well as the one I'm about to post. And one final thing that I'd like to say is while it's a little bit more to get started now, if you take the time to do it now, nothing's going to change in the future except maybe setup time. So hopefully as people jump on board and we get things like GUI based installers or maybe even images for different platforms, if you take the 15, 20 minutes, maybe a little bit more that it takes to do it now, you're not really missing anything coming in the future. You're getting all the functionality. The only things that would change about the install is just how you do it and maybe a couple of steps that are saved for you. So if you're into this stuff, even in the slightest bit, you could feel free to dive right right in today and it's not like you're waiting for the next thing to come because if it does you could just update your existing setup so i'll leave you with that and i do want to say before i go thank you to everybody who supports this channel in any way possible it is you who's keeping these behind the scenes projects the videos the website the weekly podcast and everything else i do alive so thank you all so much and i'll see you all very soon with lots more retro nas videos